Well, welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. It is now time for Inside the Ten. Very good morning. Welcome, Michael Shamus, as always, Brent Reid, and our very own uh, Neil Breen. He's come all the way down from Queensland. I'm off the to bench today. Us. We're on it. We're on it, <laughs> Breen. Well, well, I, I only found out everyone in Australia is at this fight. <laughs> so they rang me and said, We're desperate. Can you, you said, come in? You said, Where's my invite? Yeah, well, so I there? Go. Don't Danny, you know who I am? It's you, an absolute if honor. You do to well, Queensland yes, radio exactly. royalty in the house. <laughs> this, could be, this could be a big thing going forward. All right, let's start off. Uh, the first one, should Volandis be chairman of selectors for the Kangaroos? You know, he's been the chairman for a long time, um, Danica. I think people have overlooked he, that. He has, he has been the, the, the uh, boss. The bo- he's the yeah. bo- boss of the ARO Commission. He is automatically the chairman of selectors, just like Peter Beatty was, just like John Grant was. So this is not a new thing. He's been sitting there for four years. It's just we haven't picked the team for so long because of COVID and the fact that Australia hasn't played. So it's not a new thing. I don't have an issue with it. I don't think I'll have any input. My issue is more with the fact that the origin coaches and our selectors. I think it puts them in a really difficult position, those two guys, when they've got to argue over players, potentially give give up. You know, the Daly Sheridan's Nathan Cleary argument, for example, I mean... How does Billy not say he wants Daly? How does Freddie not say he wants Nathan? I think it puts those guys in a difficult position. I think that's more a concern for me. Can we get a camera in there and see what that selection Fly on the wall. is? Like? Yeah. Like, imagine, Documentary. Imagine Volandis sitting there saying, you know what, I don't want Teddy. I think Matt Dufty should be the Australian <laughs> fullback. Like, Matt do you actually Duffy. think... <laughs> do you actually, <laughs> doesn't yeah. say that. Do you actually think that Peter Volandis is going to sit there with Brad Fittler and, and uh, Billy Slater and say, you know what, guys, I think you're making the wrong call here. It's an honorary role. It's probably... It's something, as you said, Reid, it's been there for the last few years since well, at least John Ten Grant. Years yeah, been, since the commission. Years. Yeah. So, look, I don't have an issue with it. If, if Peter Volandi turns around and does say that I don't agree with these selections, then, OK, we're going to have an issue with it. But it's, it's just there as an honorary role. He'll be part of it. Isn't like it the... a relic from the past? You know, like there were a lot of honorary things in rugby league. The ARL Commission comes along. Surely it's time that the ARL Commission chairs... Not the chairman of selectors for the kangaroos. I would say surely Brittany, we can come up with someone else. I would say, Brittany, I reckon you need a safeguard there in case the there's select, a blue. The, well, the selectors want to pick someone who maybe, maybe they don't a dodgy agree, character, a dodgy character, right? Yeah. So Controversial got, character. Am I going to send them to the UK? Or, to... or make them captain? You know, the, maybe Peter's there to say, guys, you think that's a really smart idea? If it. And Mel's but, in the room Mel's as well. Room. Like, why isn't Mel getting the most say? He's the mm. coach of the team. Like Billy and Freddie. They make, they're making the calls for the Queensland and New South Wales team on who will play. Of course, they have advisors, but why isn't Mal having the most say in who should be the It's in hard the for those team? origin coaches to be a selector. Yeah. Like, they can hardly be impartial and go, look, my guy got towed up here, so just put your guy in. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got to back your guy, right? Yeah. All right, number two. Is it Latrell Mitchell's uh, trip to the US to fix his hamstring money well spent? Looks like it. Jeez, he looks good, doesn't he? And he looks fit. If it fixes his hammy, it is. Yeah, look, I think it's. I think as well for Latrell Mitchell that period being away from not playing. We know your new Origin was coming up. His South Sydney weren't travelling too well. Just get him away from everything and get out of his environment. And he looks unbelievable, Latrell Mitchell, mm. as good as you've seen for a long time. Is it worth it? Well, we'll find out if they're playing finals football. South Sydney fans came into the year on the back of a grand final, so they would have thought this year's a success for this year would be going one better. They don't look like they're going that that well at the moment, but Latrell Mitchell come back, hopefully um, get himself fit, maybe in line for Origin the next few games, but he, he looks good. Whatever it cost them, 50, 60, so 70 how much, grand. how much did it cost them, do we there know? There were reports that it was about $70,000 for Latrell to go over that there. That sounds about right. And yeah. how does it, wouldn't it be cheap. How well, does it work? So does the club pay for the for the whole thing of it? Does, who contributes? Well, the, I think there's a couple of people who went over with him, but Reedy spoke to Bill Knowles, I the actual to trainer. Knowles, yeah, the American he, he's told us all about it. Yeah, great, great, great yarn. Uh, he was really impressed with Latrell. Actually, he said he was an exceptional athlete, had the physique to, to be, play American football. If he wanted to go down that path at some point in his career, and there's other parts, no, of, the ga- there's other parts of the game, there's other parts of the game. Not enough to pick up. I can't take no, it. No, 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 not that that's going to happen. But you know, he was really impressed with Latrell and his application and the way he carried himself over there. Um, and Brenny said it. I mean, he's come back looking. He looks, looks sensational. Good, yeah. mm. And, you know, and then, he, of course, South Sydney carries the freight. Yeah. Like Latrell hasn't paid. No. Does, does he go on the salary cap, Reedy? Really? I don't know. That's a good question, Mick. Maybe we might have a story in that. Oh, yeah. We might do some cut, digging. Cut cut <laughs> um, all right. Well, has the NRL made the right call introducing a new judiciary system for origin and finals? I think it's common sense. I think it's a long, long overdue because I cast my mind back to a few years ago with Billy Slater in that grand final. Like, this is not just for origins. It's for finals as well. Remember that shoulder charge? I think it was Sasai Fecky in the corner yeah. and... He, yeah, there was so much talk about him missing the grand final. I think the best players in the game need to be playing in the big games. Unless there is something serious, and a, a real bad crusher or a real bad high tackle, then 
it doesn't help anyone in the game to have them out. So what is it? It's, it's more fines, mm. more less fines, time less suspensions, basically. Yeah. Unless yeah, it's a so. serious offence, you'll be sitting. You won't be sitting on the uh, the sidelines for a game. And I think that makes the spectacle even better because guys who are on the edge there, going into a big game, may not go all out thinking oh, I'm on the edge. I might miss out on a, a prelim or a grand final here if I take this too far. Yeah, at least we'll right. see the at least we'll see the players go out there, give it their all, be brutal, and and walk the tightrope. On the surface, looks a good idea, right? But for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm. Here we so, go. You know, we've got to oh, wait and go. see. Here we go. Let's Newton's wait and up. see. <laughs> 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 you know, on the surface, looks like a great idea, great, great change. But you just want to see what the the fallout is. You know, the, the ripple effect of it all before I can but quite come often, out and quite often after that all, it's a, they clean up a judiciary thing in the dead of night, and everyone moves on. Yeah, yeah. yeah and exactly. the main it thing happens. is the main thing is the clubs. The clubs are blowing up. That they're sending a player off to play rep- representative football. And they can't play the next two weeks because they've got a charge from Origin. How is it their fault? Well, it was only happening two days before Origin, though. Ah, who cares? That's we like to leave things to the last minute. Oh, we, we do, don't we? We're under exactly. pressure. We could have done it in the off-season. <laughs> um, all right, well, there is still uh, a big job for the Bulldogs to find a head coach, someone whose name's been thrown around a fair bit, Brad Fittler, despite the fact that he's got a job here at Town Line and also <laughs> coaching the Blues. If you were Freddie, would you coach the Bulldogs? Brenny? How well does he get on with Gus? It's a graveyard coaching under Gus. Come on, let's let's face the facts. It is. But Freddie's probably got the clout to not let it be a graveyard for him. I think it's going to come down. And I've watched this from afar. I've watched this from afar. It's going to come down to how much desire Freddie has to coach NRL. Mm. And the fact he hasn't answered the question makes me think he's seriously thinking about it. Why would you give up what he's got? Mm. He's got a great life. I mean, he's working here. Yeah, but, on, mate, you know, when you've got an itch, you want to scratch it? He scratched it a while ago. No, he didn't <laughs> scratch it well. It was still itchy <laughs> no, it was good when he finished. Not, is that all right? Remember, remember he's never scratched it. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Like, I just think he... You know what I mean? I, I, but if you have an itch to scratch, it'll become a rash at the Bulldogs. It's, it's, like, it's not somewhere you want to go, get him back. Oh, look, even Gus himself has admitted there's 18 months of pain ahead yeah. for the Bulldogs before they get anywhere near where they want to be. If you're Brad Fittler, don't you just see out the 18 months, keep coaching the Blues, enjoy yourself, win a couple of series, hopefully, and then get back into a coaching Gus in a job. Gus wants Freddie because there's other coaches there. Gus hasn't had any applicants. Yeah, and he, well, that's what he says. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he, he's had a very a couple of public ones who yeah, put their yeah. hands up. Flano's there doing interviews saying, well, I'll they're... take the job. <laughs> there's, th- there's whispers that they're working on Cameron Sorraldo in the background as well. So, I mean, I don't know if Freddie's... How many jobs has Freddie's Cameron Sorraldo been I don't been think he's in the mix, but I think that some other guys well, are in the mix as well. I mean, it's always good to have your name thrown around. Oh, of Wouldn't course. you want that to... Uh, is, is he knocked on the door of the bosses here and said, hey, guys, a little bit more... He's left from Brett Reed. Just get your might name thrown around. It might help you out a little bit. <laughs> no, you I, look, talk, I, I think please. Gus has said that it's a job for an experienced coach. Do we classify Freddie as an experienced coach given what he's done at origin level? Yes, or, or is it yeah. a... Yeah, well, he's coached the NRL before. It's been a long time ago. It was a long time ago. He's been really successful in, in origin, obviously. It's a different arena, but, you know, I think Freddie's a smart guy. He seems like he knows what he's doing. Um, and if he does it, I th- think he'd be really successful. But I don't he's know why... He's ready to coach, I don't know why you would give up what he's got. I know you can scratch an itch, but... Why bring Do you want me to scratch it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, right last that question. Um, we've got 49 <laughs> seconds left. Who is under more pressure, uh, Holbrook or Brown, the Warriors or the Titans coach? I think probably Brownie. I just think they're, they're pretty rock solid up in the Gold Coast. The Frizzells and the Kellys with, with Justin, they just signed into a long-term deal, so I would think Nathan Brown. Oh, we've seen Mark Robinson, the Warriors owner. He could be pretty ruthless. Yeah, yeah. I, anything can happen at any, at any moment. We've seen with Matt Lodge and Stephen Kearney before. I, I think Nathan Brown. Yeah, I think Nathan Brown, I don't think he's going to make it. I really don't. The performances aren't there. But I'll tell you what, like being in Queensland now full time, boy, oh boy, the Titans have been disappointed. Haven't they? Won't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what, is, what is the, the Gold Coast for sports teams? <laughs> what good goes place on to live, Brownie. Mate, it's a good place, good Brownie, place to go for a Brownie. surf Brownie. and <laughs> but play sport at the Gold Coast. It's a coach killer. Yeah, it is. Career mm. killer. Mm-hmm. All right, well, that is all we have time for. Brini, a special thank you to you for coming all the way down from uh, no Queensland. No problem. Good to see it. you, D-Mace. Good to see you. I knew you when you were nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you now. Now she's the face now of the game. Now she's in charge. <laughs> <laughs>